Hello, my name is Mrs Kershaw and I am one of the science directors with Outward Grange Academies Trust. In today's lesson we're going to take a look at giant covalent structures. Our challenge is going to be to describe the structure of diamond and graphite and our aspire to explain the physical properties of diamond and graphite. But first of all, as a starter, list as many things as you can about the graphite and diamond Focus in particular on the properties and the structure. 30 seconds. Okay, so previously we have looked at simple covalent molecules and they normally only involve several atoms. These are small molecules and if you remember they have low melting and boiling points because they only have weak forces between the molecules. Carbon dioxide is an example of this, as is methane. But in today's lesson we're going to look at giant covalent structures and these involve many atoms that are covalently bonded together to form large structures. And because they are so large, they have very high melting and boiling points. And examples of these are diamond, silicon dioxide, commonly known as sand, and graphite. So what are the properties of diamond? Well, if we look at the diagram, we can see that all four electrons in the outer shell of car the carbon are involved in bonding because each carbon atom forms four single covalent bonds. And this will affect the properties of this type of carbon. So diamond is very hard. It's the hardest natural substance. And this means that we often use it for things like jewellery and cutting tools. Diamond has an incredibly high melting and boiling point because it needs lots and lots of energy to break the many, many strong covalent bonds. And because all of the electrons in the outer shell of the carbon are involved in bonding, there are no free electrons and so diamond cannot conduct electricity. If we compare this then to graphite, graphite is a form of carbon in which the carbon atoms are arranged in layers. The layers can slide over each other, so graphite is much, much softer than diamond, and graphite is often used in pencils and as a lubricant. You can see from this diagram here that each carbon atom in the layer is joined to only three other carbon atoms, so that means it only uses three of the four electrons in its outer shell for bonding. This means that there is one free electron per carbon atom and this electron becomes delocalized and can move through the structure. This means that graphite will conduct electricity, which is incredibly unusual for covalent substances. So, graphite is soft and slippery. The layers slide over each other. This is why graphite is used as a lubricant. And graphite conducts electricity. It's the only non-metal to do so. So the free electron from each carbon atom means that each layer has delocalized electrons. These can carry a charge. And for this reason, in science experiments and in the laboratory, you will have often seen that graphite is used as an electrode. Remember that the strong bonds between the atoms, the covalent bonds are very, very strong. But between the layers, there are weak intermolecular forces. And this is why graphite is slippery. Right, time for you to summarise what I've just said. So for diamond and graphite, can you say how many bonds did each carbon atom form? Is it hard or soft? Does it have a high or low melting point? Does it conduct electricity? What type of bonding? 
and it's a large or a small molecule. Four minutes, off you go. Diamond forms four bonds, where graphite only forms three. Diamond is very hard, where graphite is quite soft. Both of them will have very high melting and boiling points. Diamond does not conduct electricity, but graphite does. Both of them are covalently bonded, and both of them are big molecules. So you can see they have some things that are in common, but there are some things that are quite different.
So why are diamonds hard? Why does diamond not conduct electricity? And why is the melting point of diamonds so high? Two minutes. So why are diamonds hard? That's because it's such a rigid structure. Those four bonds formed from each carbon atom to four other carbon atoms gives a really rigid structure. It doesn't conduct electricity because there are no free delocalised electrons. And the melting point is so high because it's such a giant structure and has so many strong covalent bonds. Let's have a look at this then for graphite. So why can graphite be used in pencils? Why is the melting point of graphite still very high, even though it's soft? What are the forces between the layers called? And why does graphite conduct electricity? Three minutes.
Okay then, so graphite can be used in pencils because there are only weak forces between the layers, so they slide over each other. The melting point of graphite is still very high because it is a giant structure and it still has many covalent bonds. The forces between the layers are called intermolecular forces and graphite conducts electricity because it has free delocalised electrons. Okay, that concludes today's lesson. So, if you would like to make some more notes in your book, there is a summary on the following slides. Pause the video and make notes as you need to.